All right, today we're going to be talking about the greatest file manager of all time, LF. So LF is a terminal file manager, and you might be wondering why in the world you would want to be using a terminal file manager instead of your usual graphical one where you have the icons and you can click click around. But what's nice about terminal file managers is just that you can use the keyboard for everything. So there's keyboard shortcuts for everything. Uh, if you use Vim a lot, then you can use the Vim keys to navigate around. And since it's keyboard centric, jumping around to different directories is very easy. All you would have to do is just program in a few shortcuts and you can jump around to anything. You can search for things very easily, so you can type in a word and you are now at that file or directory right here. And while the learning curve might be a little bit steep, you do have to learn a few key bindings in order to use everything correctly. But once you go through the trouble of that, honestly working with the terminal file manager is a lot easier than the alternative. And basically once you give it a shot, you probably won't be going back. And for me, I'm using this LF file manager specifically just because it's written in Go, it's very fast. And because you can basically add any kind of functionality to it just with shell script. So if you have the inclination to add some functionality or do anything that you want, it's pretty easy to add to. And so in this video, I'm just going to be going over the basics of how to set this up, how to configure everything. So let's start off with installation. So you can just see this on the GitHub page. I believe there are packages in every major distribution. And it's probably just going to be something like LF. And then in order to start this up, you would just type in LF and you are in. So let me go over some basic key bindings and how to get around here. So by default, the uh, default key bindings are pretty good. If you've ever used Vim, then these are going to be very familiar to you. These are basically the Vim key bindings. And the defaults are pretty good. I did make some changes to the key bindings, but let's just go over the defaults right now. So you have the Vim keys, the HJKL keys in order to get around. So you would go up and down using these. And you can also just use the arrow keys if you'd rather. And so in order to go into a folder, you would hit L or right. In order to go back, it would be H or left. So let's go into this folder. We can navigate here and we can scroll down by just going down, of course. Or if you want to go a bit faster, you can do control D to go down a bit faster, a half page at a time. Control U to go up and then control F will go down a full page and then control B will go up a full page. So that's how to quickly navigate around a whole lot of files that you have. You can also search for things with slash, as you would expect from Vim. If I wanted to search for something like Dunst, okay, here we go. I can hit N to find the next ones. Okay, that's pretty useful. And of course you can push Shift N to go backwards. And if you want to search backwards, you can hit question mark and same thing. Or I should also mention that you can go to the top by pressing GG and go down to the bottom by pressing capital G like you would in Vim. And if you want to move some items around, what you can do is you can copy with Y. So we can copy this and then let's paste it in the home directory with P. So we have this right here. And this is just a copy. If you want to move it, say cut it, you would push D and then you would paste it in another folder right here. So let's paste it back in here. Now we have two of these. And if we want to select a whole bunch of files, then you would select those with space. So you can select a whole bunch of these with space. You can unselect them with space as well. You can also hit V to invert the selection. So now I'm selecting everything but these. And you can hit U to unselect all of these. So I hit U and everything's back to normal. But let's just select a few files right here. And you can move these with, of course, D and Y, like I explained earlier. But if we change our mind and we don't actually want to move anything, we can clear all of the copy and cut commands with C. So all of these are unselected now. So that's how you can move around and navigate through your files, just the basic functions. And you can sort all these files by pushing S and it'll bring up a few different commands here. So you can sort by time or date. You can sort by the size. You can sort the natural way, which is just alphabetically. You can sort by extension. So let's sort by time and we can see all of these in date order. So I have some from January all the way up to November 17. And of course we can also sort by something like size with SS right here. Now the smallest file sizes are at the top, largest are at the bottom. There's a few other commands that you can also use by hitting Z. So we can also reverse this. So if we wanted the 
uh, smallest file sizes to be on the bottom, then we can reverse this with ZR. So as we can see now, the smallest ones are at the bottom. And we can also show and hide hidden files and folders right here. So if you take a look in the home directory, I have a whole bunch of dot files right here, which you may or may not want to see. I usually do. But if you don't want to see these, you can just ZH and toggle these on and off. And finally, you can run a shell command with the dollar sign. So this opens up a kind of mini shell down here. So if we want to run a command like remove this file right here, then we can do that. And it will do that for us. It is now removed. By default, there's no key binding to remove a file or trash it just because it's a little bit dangerous. You can trash something and then never see it again that you didn't mean to. But if you want to add a command in order to trash something or basically do anything, you can do that with LF. So right now I'm going to show you how to add a whole bunch of custom commands. Because to be honest, LF doesn't come with a whole lot of stuff out of the box. So you've seen these uh, image previews on the side here. This does not come standard out of the box. You have to add this. If you want to unzip a zip file, if you want to untar a tar file, then all of these you have to add in manually. And even maybe some basic commands like creating a file, creating a folder, or removing a file. These all have to be added in manually with shell script. But it's actually very easy to do, and I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. But if you want a file manager that has all of these features built in out of the box, maybe LF isn't the file manager for you. But I like it just because it is so customizable that you can not add in all of these features and even more just because the syntax for working with it is so simple. So let me just show you how to go and do this right now. Enough talking. So let's open up our .config, and we're going to want to create something new called LF right here. And we're going to want to create an LFRC. And if you're not sure what to put in here, well, you can just copy mine. I'll probably leave a link to this in the description. But you can also grab an example file, say from their GitHub. It's under Etsy. And then there's going to be an LFRC.example file right here. And this will have a whole bunch of example commands and things. See, there's an unzip command right here. If you don't want to go through and manually figure out how to do everything yourself, this is a nice little starter point. But of course, you can also use something like mine as well. Let me just show you how mine looks. So of course, you can add in some basic settings like I always want hidden files to be true. I want to ignore the case. So if I'm searching for something and I add a capital where there is no capital, I still want it to be able to find that. But if you want to add some custom function like create a directory or make a file or even something like set the wallpaper automatically for you, you can do this with shell script. So this is basically just a short little shell script right here. Basically whenever we run this command make dir, then we're just going to print directory name so it's asking you to type in a directory name and then read what you typed and then make directory with this uh, variable that you just typed in. So if you're not that familiar with shell script this might look a little bit weird but you can copy a lot of uh, these commands from other people's LFRCs. You don't need to be a shell script expert to use this by any means. Like I'm not a shell script expert at all, but you can just copy and paste a few commands and then change a few things around just to get the desired effect. So we have one function making a directory, one making a file, and I have one here that will unzip or untar anything that you throw at it. And we can execute all of these with a key binding. So let me go down here and you can use these key bindings right here. So if I wanted to run this unarchive function right here, then you would type in map AU or whatever the key binding that you want it to be and then the name of the function right here. So if I open up an instance of LF and I go to a zip file and I type AU, then it will automatically unzip that all for me. And of course, there's going to be more examples in the LFRC example file here. So take a look at that if you want. But I also like to add in a few different uh, key bindings right here. So a few of the key bindings I don't actually like myself. So let me just show you what these all look like. So I'm just changing a few of the key bindings around. For example, I like X to cut instead of D. Uh, I like to have a delete function with capital DD. And I'm also adding some key bindings for the custom functions that I added earlier like make file, make directory, and set wallpaper. 
But if you like all of the default key bindings, then you don't really have to change these. These are just my preference. And another thing you'll probably want is to have some kind of shortcuts to get around to different folders that you use a whole lot. So for something like downloads, I navigate here all the time and I don't want to have to open up a new LF and then manually scroll down to the downloads folder or something like that if I'm using it so often. So what I can do is I can map something and just have it function as a CD into that directory. So if I type G and then capital D, then it will automatically navigate into my downloads folder. And all of these will navigate to different folders. So this is how you would set up some shortcuts. And this can be whatever you want. It doesn't have to be G or anything. But now you know the basic key bindings and how to set up a basic configuration file right here. So next up, let's just go over how to add a few more features. So let's go over icons right here. So as you can see over here, I have a bunch of nice icons telling me if this is a folder, if this is a text file, if this is an image or anything like that. But by default, you're not going to have all these nice icons over here. So if you do want to add these icons, then you are going to have to first go into the configuration file. So let's open up my LFRC again. And you can also open it up in your preferred editor with E. And the first thing that you want to do is you want to add this line up here saying to set icons to true. And unfortunately, that's not all you have to do. You do have to do a little bit more work. So let's just go back to the GitHub right here. And unfortunately, they're not really an easy way to do this. But what you basically have to do is you have to copy this huge list right here, or at least for all of these file types that you actually want. So this is going to get an icon for each of these individual file types right here. And you're going to want to put this inside your shell configuration file say your bash RC or your ZSHRC. So for example, I have this in my Z shell configuration and it's way down here. I have a ZSHN file and that's where I put all of my variables. And so all of my LF icons are going to be in here. So you can see I basically just copy and pasted this from the wiki page right here. I will leave a link to that. And you'll also want to make sure that you're using a terminal font that can display all these icons right here. So if you're using something like nerd fonts, then that will all display correctly. So if you're using some kind of monospace font, then you would just come here and download the nerd font version of that. And the nerd font is just basically a monospace font plus a whole bunch of additional icons. So that's how it's able to display all the icons right here. But once you're done with that, you can just save that and open up LF again and all of the icons should work properly. And next up, let's also go over how to get image previews and also video previews. So if we look here, you can get a little video preview of each of the videos right here, as well as obviously the image preview as well. Now there's a few different hacky ways to kind of do this, but the easiest way I've found to do this is just to use LF Uberzug right here. And I'm sorry for my American bastardization of this word, but this is just how I'm going to say this word, deal with it, it's Uberzug to me. And so what we're going to want to do is install this right here and so we can do this by first installing a few packages right here. So you do need Uberzug right here in order to display images in the terminal. You need FFmpeg for videos, GS for PDFs. I believe the package for that is Ghost Script. But anyway, once you've installed all these prerequisites right here, then we can just clone this repository right here. So let's just copy this right here. Let's just get clone this into our home folder right here. And basically we just want to get these three scripts right here, LF Uberzug, Cleaner, and Previewer, and put them in our slash users slash local slash bin. So let's just copy into these right here, LF Gadgets, LF Uberzug, and then you would sudo cp all three of these right here. And you would just send all of these to slash user slash local slash bin right here or anywhere that your path is located. So if you have a personal scripts folder, then you can also put these in there, but I just put these all in here, that's fine for me. So once you're done doing that, then you would just want to also grab this uh, LFRC Uberzug right here, and then you want to copy that into your .config folder. You're going to want to create a new folder called LF Uberzug right here, and then drop this LFRC Uberzug in here. So this will be an LFRC specifically for this version with the Uberzug right here. You don't really need to make any changes to this. But finally, after you've done all of that, 
then you should be able to run LF Uber Zug right here. And once you run this, then all the previews should work just fine. So you're now able to get all the image previews that you could ever want. And since you probably don't want to type out LF Uber Zug every single time, then you would just alias LF to this. So what I personally do is I alias LF to LF Uber Zug right here. And after you run that, then you would just type in LF and everything works exactly as you would expect. Now there's a whole lot more that I could probably show you in this video. I could just go on and on about LF and all the features that you can add. But that's probably enough as an introduction for this video. This is more than enough of a basic configuration to get you going. And this is basically all the configuration that I do. And it's more than usable from this point on. So you're now able to look through your files and just navigate and find everything much more quickly than you would using a graphical file browser. And of course, much quicker than CDing around and finding everything yourself inside the terminal. So I would really recommend this to anyone looking to streamline your process a little bit with a really nice, easy to use terminal file manager. So if you have any more questions about LF or any more features that you wanna see me explain, just leave me a comment and I'll try to make a video about it if I can. But hopefully this will inspire you enough to get started. So give it a try, see if you like it and report back and let me know.